Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. We have a very unsettled weather setup coming over the coming days, bringing multiple rounds of severe storms, then a stronger May cold front that will be coming in on the backside. So let's expand the view this afternoon, take a look at the big picture on the water vapor imagery. We've got an area of low pressure that's highlighted air across Utah. That's, a, that's bringing in all the cooler anomalies. You can actually see the swirl in the atmosphere and it's even snowing in some of the higher elevations but further south we still have that much more active subtropical jet stream and that's the culprit that bringing in all the flooding rains across areas of texas as of late and then we also have some sporadic you know sporadic showers highlighted across the eastern seaboard so if we take a look at the of the overall surface map this morning you can see the low pressure center that is highlighted over Utah and back behind it, we've much chillier, cooler anomalies coming in across the Pacific Northwest as well as into California. But out ahead of it, there's the warm sector folks. And that brought all the heavier rains last night across North and Central Texas and further South into Southeast Texas this morning and light showers inundated areas of Louisiana back into Arkansas as well as into Eastern Oklahoma. We also have some instability that's riding up the East Coast with some light to moderate rain showers as we get deeper into the afternoon. But you can see the overall temperature change over just the last 24 hours and you can really see where that low pressure is yeah that's really knocking those temperatures down in a big way across oregon back into nevada as well as into california sneaking into areas of idaho and there we also have that cooler boundary that came across the middle of the country that brought some severe storms yesterday and some larger hail down there in West Texas and all the flooding rains in the overnight hours in North and Central Texas and this morning into South Texas. So we've seen a significant change as of late and over the next 24 hours, here is where the rain showers are going to be. So first, we have the system coming in from the Pacific Northwest. Some of these are gonna be some snow into the higher elevations across the Intermountain West. Further to the south, we have that boundary. We still have some more heavier rains as we get through the afternoon across the areas of Southeast Texas, pulling further north into Eastern Oklahoma, back into Arkansas, as well as into Western Tennessee, Western Kentucky. And then there we have the instability that's riding up the East Coast that will be bringing you know, more showers into areas of North Carolina, back into Virginia, and as well as uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, up into Long Island, as well as into portions of Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and finally getting up into Maine, which is some light showers for you. But overall, here's the big picture. So what we're going to be seeing this week, you can actually see the deeper, darker, darker reds into Mexico. That warmer temperatures is going to be lifting north and it's actually going to be bringing some some pretty warm conditions across Florida as much as the southeast and really the deep south. At the same time, we're going to be tracking that more significant trough be coming in from the northwest. And unfortunately, that will be setting the stage. The beginning stages would likely be a multiple days of severe storms that's going to be starting in the plains because we have a pretty significant negatively tilted trough kind of that ski jump trough this is a kind of a textbook setup unfortunately for rounds of severe weather we've got warmer anomalies further south we got deep moisture content in the gulf of mexico that's surging north we've got elevated lift we got shear at the surface and the upper level winds all the atmosphere will be rotating and gives you the perfect scenario unfortunately for severe storms and tornadoes as well and it's pretty concerning that these uh, tornado parameters are hitting so high uh, even right now across Oklahoma and a good part of Kansas I do feel further south even though you see the tornado parameters are pretty significant it's still going to be really unstable but I feel like they're going to be fighting a capping inversion down further south with all those warmer anomalies coming in from South Texas. So as we head into Monday afternoon, here is the setup folks. And unfortunately, yes, it looks to be another day of tornadoes and some of those could be strong tornadoes. And unfortunately, some could be long track tornadoes as well, especially across Kansas, as well as into Oklahoma, 
into the late afternoon evening time frame so if you live in the topeka region the wichita region tulsa oklahoma city lawton or ardmore all those areas are going to be highly under the gun to see in tornado tornadoes and they look to train from south to north along that boundary so we could see a similar type setup that we saw just last week with that setup across Oklahoma, unfortunately, because it looks to be fairly similar to that particular setup that you dealt with last week. So I will be doing live coverage on this particular setup starting tomorrow. So definitely make sure you hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and have notifications on and tune in for live coverage. And also you're gonna be dealing with some of that larger hail. So not only are you gonna be dealing with the tornadoes, but the much more significant hail, you saw the colder air coming in from the northwest. So as these towering cloud tops, you know there's going to be a lot of cold air aloft. So there's going to be a huge swath where they could be seeing some large, to if not almost very large hail. We've seen a ton of that lately, producing some two, three at times, sometimes softball size hail and some of those isolated stronger thunderstorms. So yes, far, far you know, interior portions of the Red River, but especially there in Oklahoma, back into Kansas, you know, feeding into portions of, of Nebraska. And that will be shifting uh, east as we get into the overnight hours. And it's going to be tapping into a lot of moisture content. It's got plenty to work with. You can actually see kind of where the dry line will be setting up across Monday afternoon. And it's going to be taking advantage of all that warm gulf air for may and that's just the perfect recipe for all three modes of severe storms on top of the damaging winds but it doesn't end there folks unfortunately we have another system continue to push across that trough continues to kind of dip and out ahead of it there's going to be the greatest lift and further further east this time into areas of illinois back into indiana those areas in Kentucky into Western Tennessee, Arkansas, those areas are gonna be the likely area for Tuesday's development for severe storms. So this is where we have the, you know, the convective complex as we head into Tuesday. So you got the Monday setup, then you kind of have an overnight type setup into the into uh, you know Monday night, Tuesday. And then as we get deeper into the day on Tuesday, out ahead of that cooler air, then that puts areas of Illinois back into Indiana, as well as in Ohio, even West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, back into northern areas of Alabama, and getting further south into Arkansas during the day on Tuesday. So here's the setup on the surface map. We got the area of low pressure that's highlighted across uh, you know, the Dakotas, bringing in all those tight isobars. So you know those winds are gonna be pretty significant. There's the cooler air on the backside, bringing that snow into some of the you know, higher elevations across the Intermountain West. And there's the warm sector out ahead of it. So that puts this whole area into play for showers further south, taking advantage of those warmer anomalies and further north near the low pressure center. That's where the most instability and the most spin in the atmosphere will be highlighted on Tuesday. So by the time we head into Wednesday, that ridge of high pressure gets a little bit closer from Mexico. And you can see the warmest temperatures so far this season are gonna be surging in. We got up to 15 record highs could be broken in many areas further south into Texas. You can see 106 kind of showing up in deep south Texas. So that's pretty extreme, even for them this time of year and those well above 90 degrees, some of these areas producing some record high temperatures into Mississippi, into Alabama, and even Florida. Look at that, folks. Widespread 90s into Florida. Some of those middle 90s. So plenty of heat going to be fueling, and that's just the actual temperature. So you know the heat index is going to be pushing the triple digits, if not above, and likely maxing out at 108 as far as a high temperature in some areas across Texas. But look at the 90s surging further north into the Carolinas, even into Virginia, even upper 80s for those areas into uh, portions of the Northeast. But there's the cooler anomalies, right? Out into the Pacific Northwest, getting into the Intermountain West through areas of Colorado. And that cooler air will be on the move as we head into Wednesday. So. There is your setup on Wednesday. So we still got the, you know, the warmer anomalies coming in from the south. 
we've got the cooler pocket of air and yes that will set the stage for another battle zone across this region and that's where we're going to have another round of severe storms and wednesday could be a pretty significant day right now the storm prediction center does have a slight risk but i'm definitely getting more concerned especially for those areas into illinois Indiana, Ohio, uh, West, you know, Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee. I do feel this area is going to be elevated much higher as we get closer to this event. So I'm definitely concerned about Wednesday as well at, at ahead with that very warm anomalies coming in from the south, colder air coming in from the northwest. And we've got a lot of shear, a lot of instability, higher dew points. Just an, again, another unfortunately perfect recipe for all three modes of severe storms. And there's Thursday, folks. You can see the cool front it takes its sweet time with the cooler anomalies draped across areas of the West, this time finally sneaking into the North Central states. But further south, there is the warm sector across a good part of the Southeast, and now lifting back into the Northeast as well, really elevating those temperatures even higher than what you're actually seeing on Wednesday. So. There's the setup on the surface map for Thursday. The cooler air will finally come in and likely going to have some of these areas producing some strong to severe thunderstorms across Texas, areas of Louisiana, portions of Mississippi, likely into even West Virginia. And even I think the East Coast will have some form of severe storms as we get deeper to the day, you know, on Thursday. But I feel like by the time we head into Friday, you know, Friday night, heading into Saturday morning, a lot of the instability is finally going to be moving out because we finally have that cooler air finally intruding all these areas across the U.S. So once the cool air comes in on the backside, that typically likes to cleanse the atmosphere out and much nicer weather will be coming in the backside. And yes, that will be time just in time for your weekend ahead but and here's the cooler anomalies you get to look forward to for your weekend nothing cold by any stretch of the imagination but it's definitely a respite of what you're going to be seeing especially with all the severe storms and the much cooler air mass and drier conditions will be coming in on the back side especially further south and the cooler anomalies as well anywhere from 5 10 upwards almost 15 degrees but look where the warm air comes back right so where you're cool now the warm air will follow building back into the Pacific Northwest, back for those areas across the West, into Wyoming, as well as into Montana, and back through the Dakotas starting for your weekend. And I think that will likely build even further as we get deeper into your weekend as well with that ridge really starting to build in. And we've got the cooler and settled weather now highlighted across the Northeast. So you are going to be somewhat unsettled for your weekend, bringing some rain showers across that region and much cooler anomalies, but you definitely won't have to be dealing with any severe storms or, you know, or anything like that. So overall, here's the breakdown as far as the, like the precipitation over the next seven days. You can actually see where the dry slot is, right? So much of California, really Nevada, much of Arizona, New Mexico, really West Texas, Western Oklahoma, these areas don't really receive much rain over the next seven days. It all turns in from the Pacific Northwest, across Washington and Oregon, across these areas into the Intermountain West, heavier amounts as you get into Montana and portions of Canada. But you can see where, you know, mainly for most of the week when you're gonna be in the warmest sector, that's where the heaviest rains are gonna be. So we do have instability on Thursday across the plains, and that moves into the Ohio Valley. But areas that remain in the warm sector the longest will be seeing the heaviest rains still to come at least two to four inches throughout the week uh, before that cold front does arrive. So guys, I will continue to keep you posted on this severe weather. Definitely stay tuned for tomorrow morning's update. And I'll be going live later on tomorrow afternoon into the evening time frame for the plains, which a pretty much significant severe weather outbreak, if not tornado outbreak across that region. So catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.